you guys asked for this. So this is an IGCSE at Excel list of biology diagrams that I think you should be able to draw and label in the exam. It's not exhaustive, it's just my opinion. And I have a feeling this is going to be quite a long video, so I'm going to call this part one. We're going to start with the animal cell, which remember is quite fried egg in shape. You've got that large central nucleus and then smaller organelles such as these horribly drawn mitochondria, ribosomes. So let's get it labelled. Remember that it has no cell wall, it just has a cell membrane if you're talking about an animal cell. There's the nucleus. The jelly of the cell is known as the cytoplasm. If we consider a plant cell now, remember this is far more boxy in shape. It has that added extra layer, which is your cell wall, as well as your vacuole and chloroplasts, which are green because they're filled with the pigment chlorophyll. So there's your cellulose cell wall. The inner layer is the cell membrane. Filled with cell sap is your vacuole. There's the nucleus, the chloroplasts, and the mitochondria look very similar. You still have that cell jelly, so the cytoplasm. Now we're gonna consider how enzymes work. Remember, enzymes are made from protein. They have a special region on them known as the active site, which binds to the substrate molecule. When these two substances bind together, we have what's known as an enzyme substrate complex. And then the enzyme releases the substrate as a product. The enzyme remains unchanged and is not used up. Now let's consider fungi cells. They're shaped quite similarly to an animal cell, but in terms of their structure, they're more plant-like. So I'll show you what I mean by that now. We have our cell wall, which is made out of chitin. With a cell wall always comes a cell membrane. The reason why I said they're fairly plant-like is because they have this central vacuole. Here's the nucleus making the fungi cell eukaryotic. There's the jelly, the cytoplasm. You can add some extra features, but make sure you don't include chloroplasts because fungi cells cannot photosynthesize. Remember, they carry out saprotrophic nutrition. Now we'll consider a bacterial cell, which remember is prokaryotic because it has no distinct nucleus. Instead, it has a circular chromosome known as a nucleoid and small circles of DNA called plasmids. Sometimes it has this tail known as a flagellum, which helps with its mobility. You have your cell wall, cell membrane, the nucleoid, plasmids, which remember is essential for genetic engineering, the cytoplasm, ribosomes. Now viruses are very simple. There's lots of different ways of drawing them. But in essence, they have a protein coat surrounding either DNA or RNA, depending on the virus type. If we consider the breathing system, I'm going to draw this super basic. There's your mouth feeding into your windpipe, which is known as the trachea. Remember, the windpipe, the trachea branches into smaller bronchi, which go to a smaller branching called bronchioles. Hence why we often say that this breathing system resembles a tree. And then we have air sacs. This is so horrible, I'm so sorry. Known as alveoli. Don't know if they'd ask you to draw this. More that you can probably label it. And then you have a sheet of muscle underneath, which is the diaphragm. 
because it would be horrendous if I tried to draw this. I'm just going to show you the digestive system now. So again, it will feature the mouth, but rather than a windpipe, you have the food pipe, which we're going to call the esophagus. This large organ over here is the liver, it sits atop the stomach. It's hard to see, but I think that's supposed to be the gallbladder, which remember is where bile is stored. This is the large intestine. The small intestine. Where feces are stored is known as the rectum. Where feces pass out of the body in a process known as digestion, you'll find the anus. And then tucked behind here, it's a vine leaf looking organ, it's the pancreas. We're gonna consider the villus, which remember is found in the small intestine. Its role is to increase the surface area for absorption of soluble food molecules. It looks a little bit like this. And coating the surface, you'll find microvilli, which further increase the surface area. There are lots of blood capillaries I'll just change colour. Honestly, you don't have to draw these super accurately, but you'll also find lacteals, which are needed for fat absorption. Now we have the heart. Just remember that the left and right side are flipped. So this means that this up here is the right atrium. Here's the right ventricle. You have the left atrium and the left ventricle. So they're the four chambers of the heart. Now, blood on the right-hand side is deoxygenated. That means that blood entering the right atrium must have come from the body. This is therefore the vena cava, the main vein carrying deoxygenated blood back to the heart. That blood needs to return to the lung, so it's going to return in the pulmonary artery. Blood gets oxygenated at the lungs. It needs to return to the heart so it can be pumped around the body. That means that coming in here is your pulmonary vein. It's unusual in that this is the only vein which is oxygenated. That blood passes into the left atrium, into the left ventricle, and out of this very characteristic arched vessel, which is known as the aorta, the main artery. Valves, you might need to know these. These are the tricuspid valves. They prevent backflow of blood into the atrium. These ones on this side are the bicuspid valves. And then sitting in the base of the aorta, you'll find other valves, find the semilunar valves. It now makes sense for us to consider the structure of the arteries, veins, and capillaries. So this is a cross-section of an artery. So that means if you were to chop into it and have a look, let's see what we'd have. So the place where the blood actually runs through the artery is known as the lumen. This is going to be narrow in an artery. Then you can see it has thick walls. What are they made up of? Made up of muscle and elastic fibers. What about veins now? They're very different. Hopefully you can see first of all that they have a wide lumen. That means that blood flows at low pressure within a vein. They have thin walls. But again, they're gonna be made up of muscle and elastic fibers. If we look instead at a cross section, let's pretend that this is a vein running in this direction. The blood passes this way. Because it's flowing at such low pressure, it has a habit of backing up and that's why there are valves like these ones here that help prevent the backflow of blood. And then lastly, capillaries. They're only one cell thick. 
as you might expect, they have a very narrow lumen and very thin walls. Okay, I don't want to make this video too long. And also, I need to find out if you guys are finding it helpful. So if you did like this video, let me know and I'll be back soon with another video talking through some more diagrams you guys need to know.